Tonight, a shooting massacre inside a fitness gym. Cops say a woman-hating gunman walked casually into an aerobic studio and fires at least 36 shots. Three innocent women were executed, nine more injured before the gunman killed himself. Now we're finding out this crazy shooter kept a web page laying out his destructive plan and blogging about his hatred towards women. Was all this because this antisocial loner kept getting rejected by women? Breaking news tonight, an unspeakable massacre in Pittsburgh last night. A lone gunman walked into an aerobics class, turned off the lights, pulled at least three guns out of a duffel bag and began firing nearly 40 rounds at the women attending the dance class. After executing three women and injuring nine others, the shooter then turned the gun on himself. The pregnant aerobics instructor gives her chilling account of how she was shot but survived. It took me a while to process what I was hearing, um, but I saw people running towards the door and I hit the floor because I was too far away from the door. When I was on the floor, I felt the first bullet on my left shoulder. And then about 30 seconds later, I felt the second in my back. The shooter, 48-year-old George Sedini, apparently had it out for women. He said he was tired of being rejected by them. He even wrote that he hadn't had a girlfriend since 1984 and hadn't had sex since 1990. After the tragic massacre, investigators found two disturbing discoveries, a note in his gym bag and an online diary detailing his upcoming murder spree. The day before the shooting, he wrote, quote, I took off today, Monday and tomorrow to practice my routine and make sure it is well polished. I need to work out every detail. There is only one shot, end quote. Investigators are working overtime trying to figure out what would drive this man to kill women he didn't even know but they need look no further than his sicko blog, which tells the sorry tale of a lonely, isolated, alienated, angry, sick individual who saw himself as the victim, as killers often do. It is called a victim mentality. There was four handguns he had on his person uh, when the shooting went down. We, as far as we can determine at this point, he used two of the handguns, excuse me, three of the handguns. He used two nine millimeter semi-automatics and he used a 45 caliber revolver. We believe it was the 45 caliber revolver which he used to take his own life. Such a horrific tragedy, and I want to hear your thoughts. Straight out to my outstanding expert panel, Pat Brown, criminal profiler and CEO of Pat Brown Criminal Profiling Agency. David Schwartz, criminal defense attorney. Bradford Cohen, criminal defense attorney. Tom Ruskin, former NYPD detective and president of CMP Protective and Investigative Group. And Judy Kuriansky, a.k.a. Dr. Judy, clinical psychologist. But first, Gene Meserve, CNN Homeland Security correspondent. Gene, what is the very latest? Well, first, we have a statement from the family of George Sodini. It says our hearts and prayers are with the victims and their families, and we pray for the full recovery of the survivors. Of course, a lot of attention being paid to this blog that you mentioned. It indicates that George Sodini started thinking about this back in November of 2008, and that in January, he came to this health club with the intention of carrying out mass murder, but in his words, he chickened out. He went home, and then he went through the rehearsals that you mentioned. Police are now trying to pin together a timeline of what happened yesterday. They're saying they think he came here to this health club at 11 o'clock yesterday morning. Then he came back in the evening uh, after 7 o'clock, but he left and apparently made a phone call. Police say they are trying to track down who exactly he called before he went back into that health club at about 8.56, 7.56. He went into the aerobics room here. He opened up his gym bag flipped off the lights, took out a 9mm, he emptied that 9mm gun, put it down and picked up a second, got partway through that magazine, and then for reasons unknown to the police, he stopped firing, then he pulled out a 45 and he shot himself. And They're apparently he was using, uh, Gene, he was using 30 round ammo clips that were illegal before the assault weapons ban was lifted in 2004, and those ammo clips allow you to kill a lot of people very quickly, right? That's right, but he did not use all the ammunition he had with him. Police said he had more than 100 rounds with him. They think he only fired about 36. 
So why did he stop? Nobody knows the answer to that. The blog, however, is giving a lot of clues as to why he did this. As you mentioned, a lot of anger and frustration voiced towards women, also towards his family. He called his mother domineering. He said his brother was a bully. He said his father was virtually absent from his life. This was a man who was carrying a lot around with him all the time. And uh, it's something that's going to be very carefully examined by the investigators. And one thing they're doing, Jane, that's very interesting, they're using forensic analysis to try and figure out who might have looked at this blog before yesterday? Who mm. might have had clues as to this man's frame of mind? Who perhaps could have alerted authorities but didn't alert authorities to what he had in his mind? Wow, it is such a disturbing, disturbing story, and especially because he didn't know any of these women. Uh, that's the, the really scary yeah. part. He wasn't even targeting anybody. He just hated women in general. He thought they had rejected him. Tonight, the world is asking who was George Sedini? The 48-year-old who gunned down three women and injured nine more before taking his own life worked for a decade as a systems analyst in the finance department of a local law firm. He was a gym member. He worked out lifting weights. He looks like an average guy. He looks pretty good in this photo. But listen what neighbors said about him. Very quiet and kept to himself. Did, did you ever have any conversations with him? Never, never. In passing, you know, I'd say hello, and that was it. You know, just being a neighbor, you know. But uh, I didn't reply back. Just didn't socialize at all. He was kind of a reclusive person, so I'm not sure that I would pick up on him looking troubled. I kind of always thought he was a little, you know, different. Definitely something off about this guy socially, but he looked pretty normal on the surface. Pat Brown, you're the profiler. We tend to stereotype what a killer or a psycho should look like, how they should behave. Some people have actually expressed surprise that, hey, this fit, relatively clean-cut guy is a mass killer. Is it time to finally throw out these stereotypes and realize Guess what? There's no particular look or resume for a demented, dangerous killer. Oh, you've got it right, Shane. I mean, after all, babies are just born. <laughs> They're not born necessarily to look like psychopaths or anything else. This boy probably did have, when he was young, uh, some kind of dysfunctional family life. So I'll buy that part of his blog to some extent, although he's probably lying a, a great deal about the family as well. But he probably had some dysfunction, which turned him into a psychopath at a pretty young age. And he's not a psychotic. Some people are saying, oh my God, he's a psychotic. No, he knew exactly what he was doing. He's a classic psychopath who blames everybody else and thinks he's entitled to whatever he wants. And when he doesn't get it, even if it's totally unrealistic, because he's got that grandiose thinking, like I should have all the cheerleaders in the world, then he gets angry because why didn't I get it and somebody else did. And Dr. Judy Kuriansky, he also has a victim mentality. <laughs> Nobody is to blame. Uh, everybody's to blame but him, okay? He is not to blame. He hates everybody, you know, no girlfriend, no sex. Uh, he's a loner. He's a loser. He says, I know nothing will change no matter how hard I try or what goals I set. And he's also grandiose. 30 million women rejected me over an 18 to 25-year period. 30 million <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is so sick. Dr. Yeah, Judy. Uh, yeah, no question about that. And actually, what's important here is the fact that he killed himself too. This is a suicide murder. Besides those people who go on rampages, as we know, Jane, many times, who shoot lots of people in McDonald's, in the post office, um, in schools. This guy had hatred towards himself, though, too, which is very important. I think in a lot of situations, he called, him, he called his family a bull a bully brother, a absent father, and a domineering mother. Sometimes that can be a very explosive kind of, of family background. And Judy, but you're the sex therapist. Uh, the fact that he hasn't had sex for 20 years uh, is <laughs> pathetic, but it's also dangerous. I mean, th that there's frustration that you're talking about right here. Well, there's a lot of frustration. And if you want to take this to a really deep psychodynamic level, then guns are often that kind of a sexual acting out, because a gun is like a sex organ. And when men are extremely frustrating and frustrated, they can end up taking out that aggression out with a gun. So or you're saying it's psychologically significant uh, and Tom Ruskin weigh in on this, that he brought four guns and it was overkill in a sense. I mean, he had, he didn't even use up all the rounds that he had and this could have been four phallic symbols. 10 seconds, Tom. Uh, very quickly, it's exactly as uh, the doctor is saying. This is a typical psycho killer 
who goes in and is trying to retaliate against his whole life. Oh my God, it's uh, stomach churning. He shot at least 36 times. Um, he had clips of ammunition that held 30 rounds, which prior to 2004 were illegal to possess when the assault rifle ban was lifted. They also became um, legal to have. He had two extra rounds in his, two, excuse me, two extra clips in his bag. I was right beside the room where it all took place. I seen everybody running. I took off my headphones at that moment and I kept hearing shot after shot repeatedly. And that's when I realized there was a gun, gun going off. A witness to last night's massacre in Pittsburgh talks about the moment he realized a killer was on the loose. 48 year old George Sedini took several guns to a nearby gym, entered an aerobics class where he shut off the lights and then shot up to 40 rounds killing a bunch of women he didn't know, injuring a bunch more. He then turns the gun on himself. Tonight, three women are dead, and uh, a whole bunch are in the hospital uh, just in shock and in injury. Back with my expert panel, Bradford Cohen. If you look at this blog, it is just mind-boggling. It's just a, a, a litany of dysfunction. He also has job worries. Quote, I predict I won't survive the next layoff. Quote, I know I will never enjoy life. You know, these quotes go on and on. He calls yeah, his dad I mean, a useless sperm donor. He calls his brother a useless bully. So there's, there's sort of this generic rage, but the biggest rage is directed at women. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that, I mean, this guy was, was not on the norm. I mean, obviously, the important thing is when this blog. You think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it, everything points to such crazy, you know, and I, it's always weird when these cases come up. Every next door neighbor says, yeah, he was really quiet. He kept to himself, really recluse. I mean, you see that time and time again. What I, what I think is interesting is uh, what Pat, the profiler, said is that, you know, you really can't tell in, in terms of what someone looks. And as a defense attorney, that's what we fight every day. You don't know how many prosecutors come up to me and say, yeah, your guy kind of looks like you're a the drug defense dealer. attorney. Do these women who were injured and the families of the dead have a lawsuit, and if so, against whom? It, it's definitely it's something that they should consider, and I, it probably against LA Fitness for some sort of lack of security. He went there once before, and he was fully armed. I don't know in terms of what kind of security they have, uh, if there is that kind of appropriate security that's in place. But I'm sure, believe me, with civil attorneys around, there's definitely going to be someone who's going to be filing a civil lawsuit. You, you know what the bottom line is, Jane? What are we going to do to prevent this in the future? You know, there needs to, we need to spend more money as a society on mental disease and defects. This is something very serious. I've, you know, almost all my criminal cases involve a mental disease or defect. And I also want to comment, you know, you could forget about family dysfunction, okay? Who doesn't have a dysfunctional family in this world, all right? I'm a not raising my hand. Okay, it was 20 years, a 49-year-old man, he went 20 years without sex. That oh, was wait, the, wait. that was the pro that was the basis wait, of heard, his problem. Heard, that would cause any man to go completely bonkers. First and of we all, need that's a that's a lie. Then we're talking that's about a, a lie. Yeah, this is a psychopath who is a pathological liar. I don't deny you, that. No, no, no. If you look at the, if you look at his blame blog, what you'll see is that he can't even keep his date straight as to when he didn't have sex and when he did. And he even said some woman had his child somewhere in the time listen. He didn't his have problem sex. was with women. His problem 100%, was that he, he was could a have psych chosen to have sex. There needed well, to David be an Schwartz, intervention. It sounds like you're blaming women for rejecting no, I'm not. him. No, I'm Maybe not. Maybe he should have looked oh, at no, himself Oh, no, Jane, that's not what I'm doing. No, why no, no. Is it that women are I'm rejecting saying, me? How do we prevent think, this? The, I think, I there think, needed to be an intervention, okay? Yes, he's psychotic. And of no, course it's not. He's psychopathic and it's not fix him. It's not the fault of women. Went into a health club. Tom Ruskin. Tom Ruskin. There's no question that in this whole time of health care, we need to pay yes. more attention to mental health care here. And there's another important issue that's very psychological that has to do with bystanders because there have been real life bystanders who stand by when people get murdered and don't want to get involved. Now it's turned to the internet and the responsibility that people have to notice what people are blogging about and who are they going to report to. That's what we need to pay attention to now. Investigators right. found a note left by George Sedini at the gym. Listen to what was in it. He basically says that um, he's, he complains about he's never spent a weekend with the girl. Uh, he's, he, um, he's never vacationed with the girl. He never lived with the women. 
Um, he, he's maybe had sex a few times in his life, and he goes on like this. Now, Gene Reserve, there's controversy about this blog, but I had read somewhere that it was posted shortly before the killings, which means right. that this was a toxic secret that he sort of revealed too late for anybody to do much about it, Gene. You know, I still th think they're doing the forensics to find out exactly when it was posted. I will tell you that Abby Tatton of CNN uh, did some nosing around on this website. She says that he was on it as recently as 6.10 yesterday night. So he was wow. noodling around with this right before he came over here. Also on the mental health issue, we don't know anything about this guy's mental health history. We don't know if he's ever had any treatment. That's one of those things investigators are looking at. We don't have the answers yet. But his way of putting this on the internet is like a cry for help in some distorted <laughs> way. And I think those are the things that we need to pay attention to. That is not a cry for help. That's his, that's his manifesto when he's going out with his big blaze. He's a psychopath. He and he would not we, have been more, right. We need, we need to get on the insurance he's companies down. also. No. We need All right, we're going we're gonna to have more. Guess what? Outstanding panel. Stay right there. Breaking news tonight, a massacre in a Pittsburgh gym leaves three women dead and many more injured. 48-year-old George Sedini entered an aerobics class last night turned off the lights and then shot up the room before turning the gun on himself. The pregnant aerobics instructor gives her chilling account of getting shot and thankfully surviving. It took me a while to process what I was hearing, um, but I saw people running towards the door and I hit the floor because I was too far away from the door. When I was on the floor, I felt the first bullet on my left shoulder. And then about 30 seconds later, I felt the second in my back. Sadidi reportedly kept an online diary in which he complained that he hadn't had a girlfriend since 1984 and he hadn't had sex since 1990. That's 20 years. Um, he also used the diary to detail his upcoming shooting spree. A lot to get to. I'm back with Pat Brown, criminal profiler and CEO of Pat Brown Criminal Profiling Agency, David Schwartz, criminal defense attorney, and Tom Ruskin, former NYPD detective and president of CMP, protective and investigative group. Uh, this story is just absolutely incomprehensible. The phone line's lighting up. Erica, California, your question or thought, man. Uh, yeah, actually, I have a question and a comment. I haven't heard anybody mention anything about steroids and the whole road rage thing. And also, I haven't had sex in seven years, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go out and kill anybody. <laughs> well, um, that's a, a, a very honest uh, statement, and I appreciate you being candid and talking about that. I think uh, part of this problem, Pat Brown, is that there is so much shame surrounding sex in our society that it's very hard for people who do have a problem like this, a guy like this who can't seem to get uh, a relationship going, who does seem to have certain character traits that turn off women and have them run away, it's very hard for him to seek help without feeling humiliated and perhaps even more ridiculed. Well, I would agree with you, Jane, if I believed that this was actually necessarily true. The, the part about getting help again, psychopaths do not seek help because they don't think they need any because it's everybody else's fault. You cannot help them. They, won't, they will lie to their therapist and they won't go anywhere. What we need to do is work when children are small to teach them that they're not entitled to everything, that just, they're not, the, the selfishness that they're, they're being brought up with, where they just get everything they want and think they can have everything. No, you have to bring up children to realize that you have to earn things and that sometimes it takes time. You have to, be, you have to wait for things. And this guy apparently didn't grow up with that, so he thinks that he should get what he wants and he's not willing to do the work. In other words, he could probably get a lady in his life if he treated them nicely, if he stopped looking for, I say, cheerleader type of 20-year-olds uh, instead of perhaps a nice 50-year-old librarian, a little overweight, who he was sweet to. He could have somebody in his life, Jane, but he's chosen not to do Jane, that. Jane, it does take an intervention. I've had oh. plenty of cases where there have been psychopaths who have had this intervention. <laughs> this guy went 49 years without killing anyone. There needs to be an intervention. It does take a village sometimes, and I guarantee you the writing was on the wall. If you send Tom Ruskin out to that gym to do an investigation, I guarantee you in five minutes he would find people that would that would come out and say that the writing was on the wall in this particular case. Right, Marbella, I mean, Ohio. Let's, let's, Go ahead. 
I, I just wonder how this person got into the gym with a bag full of weapons. If uh, metal detectors had been in place, this whole tragedy never would have happened. Well, listen, David Schwartz, we can't completely shut down every single one of our institutions. After Virginia Tech, everybody started talking about security on campuses. What are we going to do? Make every person who goes into any kind of institution go through a metal detector because we're such a violent society that this guy could get his hands on four guns with 30 round ammo clips no problem yeah i don't i don't think that's realistic in a free society that we're going to have metal detectors in in every place possible but we need to be aware of our surroundings we need to understand as a society and we need to prevent this tom we're also, i'm going to give you the last word we're also going to see as this investigation unveils itself that this guy had other signs people could have seen a warning sign. There are other outbursts that he's had in his life. I'll bet you dollars it does. This is a man who went into a gym, shut off the lights, and hunted down his prey and didn't even look at them at the time he was shooting them. But I'll tell you something. It's very hard to help people who don't want to help themselves. It's very hard to help people after they get to a certain age where they're set. It's uh, intractable. I want to thank my fantastic panel. Please come back soon.